Hi everyone, in this video I'm, I'm going to give a quick explanation of why 5G NR is not working whenever the SIP1 is disabled on 5G non-standalone network. So let's go through the other side, it will be a quick one. So let, this is a signaling for uh, flow for 5G non-standalone handover whenever the U is trying to move from one 5G cell to another cell. So initially, the first thing that we will do, the U will be reporting the measurement report. After, for sure, this is happening after it received the RRC reconfiguration message from the 4G uh, indicating which, what is the target frequency to be measured and the event type and so on, as we described previously about this part. So this measurement report, it will be sent from the UE to the 4G, then it will be transferred from the 4G to 5G through RRC transfer message. And this information will be covering the BCI and the RSRB information and the RSRQ as also highlighted in the previous video. So once the 5G, including this one, but one more one point to highlight that currently, as you know, that the, there is no direct signaling between the UE and, and 5G. That's why in 5G and standalone, majority of the signal is going through the 4G, then it being transferred to the 5G. However, the, the, this kind of messages it can be directly transferred, the RRC and, and the signaling part can be transferred, especially for the RRC transfer or measurement report, directly from the UE to the 5G if SRB3 is enabled. And we can discuss about this part later on. So once the, the 5G node B received the RRC, the measurement report message, which is covering BC and RSRB, it will start searching the neighbor uh, relation or neighbors less defined neighbor list within the 5G a serving cell uh, about this PCI. If this PCI is not found, then this will be like detected as a missing neighbors. So in this case, it cannot be added if, if the NR because it doesn't have any, any information about the uh, it would be and cell identity and so on. So in this case, the 5G would request from the 4G to ask the UE to report the CGI measurement or CGI information. This CGI information will be covering in shortly about the information covering here, but it's like covering the it would be identity and cell identity and so on. So the 4G will deliver our serial conversion message with covering the report CGI measurement. It's actually this one will be covering two bars. Which is that CG, the 4G will be requesting the UE to report the CGI measurement, and it also will also deliver the DRX configuration settings. Uh, and this is the main main reason of delivering the DRX along with the CGI that the serving cell will terminate the DRX will then terminate all the downlink data reception for the UE in the serving cell, so the UE will be able to measure the the system information from the target 5G side. So once the UE received this message, we will be replying our three commission complete and the decision beam modification confirm will be sent from the 4G and 5G. So here and at this stage, the UE will start reading the save one information from the missing neighbor cell, which is being reported in the beginning to try to obtain the CGI information. And here is here is here, here is came the issue. Let's assume that the target 5G site it doesn't have SIB1. SIB1 is not enabled. In this case, the UE will not be able to decode or obtain or acquire the CGI information. So in this case, the UE will keep reporting the measurement report, which is containing the BCI and the RSRB, and the, the handover will not be done, and the, the 5G will not be able to add the missing neighbors. And that's why the, the NR will not be working. So assume now that SIB1 is being enabled in, in, in the target 5G side, so the UE will be able to decode uh, the SIB1 information, which will be covering those information. SIB uh, information after, like, for example, after the Billman identity list, the SIB1 will be covering this information, which is MCC, MC, it's called NCGI. NCGI having combination between MCC, MNC, mobile country code, mobile network code, plus the CGI. CGI, this, here is information for CGI cell identity, this like, Currently, it's container of 22 bits plus 14 bits. The first 22 bits is covering the GNB information, uh, GNB site ID, and the, the last 14 bits is covering information about the cell identity. And I will be dropping a link to how to calculate the the the, C, the CGI from the or uh, NCGI from the your your network for the GNB and cell ID and so on. So this is information about system one information block one. That that's why without step one the CGI cannot be reported by the UE. Accordingly, the, the 5G, the NR will not be working. So once the UE read the same information, this time it will be reported measurement report, which will be covering again now, as I mentioned, the NCGI information, BCI and the SRB, before it was only BCI and the SRB and the SRQ and so on. And this information will be transferred to 5G. And once it's transferred, the neighbors, now the 5G node B can add the missing neighbors based on the CGI feedback. Now let's just quickly go through the NCGI information just to know more about it. 
Here is the cell, uh, uh, cell and BTS, uh, BTS identity planning. As you can see here, the NCGI is containing like three parts, uh, MCC, MC, this is a ty uh, typo. This is like here three bits or here two, two, two up to three digits. And this one, it's 36 bits, which is the CGI, which is our, our, our request, which is being covered in, also in the system information one. This, this part can be e either containing 22 bits for the genome B identity plus 14 bits or 32 bits and four bits. Usually majority of the network is using the first one and this is configured. You can do the configuration through your, your, uh, your OSS system. You can do the configuration based on the network requirement, but now majority of the network is containing 22 bits and 14 bits, which is fair enough to cover majority of the, of the site IDs in your network or cell identity. However, those cases can be used, especially for the 32 bits in very specific scenarios, which is, really happens uh, and I don't have information whether anyone is using this one or not. Like for example, if you have a very big network and this network cont containing cell, femto cells and, and the small cells and many small cells and so on. So in this case, maybe you need a lot of genome ID identity identities. So that's why maybe you need to increase the number of pets for the genome B and so on. And this is this all about today video. Uh, I hope you like the contents. And if you like the contents, please, please press like and subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video. Thank you very much.